Hello friends and my dear colleagues. The topic of my presentation is Bounce Back, Get Back on Track. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic is disrupting the daily life of millions of people around the world. And we as dental professionals are not the exception. We are facing a challenge that we have not been prepared for. Practices closed or limited to emergency cases only. No dental college nor any training program trained us to deal with a situation like this. If this sounds familiar to you and you would like to be more productive as you are and make a strong bounce back to the post lockdown, here are a few practical tips for you. But before I start, I would like to thank Dr. K. Satish Reddy, President AP State DCI and other office bearers and dignitaries for having given me this opportunity to speak on this very interesting topic. I would also like to thank Dr. K. Gangadhar Prasad, my fellow orthodontist and a dear friend. Let's begin today's presentation with a short prayer for the safety of all the health workers. Currently, if there is one profession that invokes fear and dread in most people, it's dentistry. Patients are always anxious and apprehensive about being poked and prodded with drills and sharp instruments during routine dental procedures. And now you add to that the risk of contracting a potentially deadly virus and it's easy to understand why many would be unwilling to visit a dental clinic for a regular checkup at this time. Dentistry is facing its darkest hour yet with the growth and spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Majority of dental clinics across the country have been shut for over two months. With the pandemic still on the growth curve, there is no hope of revival anytime soon. Let's see what are the various challenges and impact of COVID-19 are. COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on the dental industry and with the pandemic still on the growth curve, it is difficult to ascertain the extent and severity of its long-term impact at this point of time. Dental surgeons are at the highest risk of contracting and transmitting the coronavirus alongside other healthcare workers. The professional future of dental practitioners and the sustenance of their practices is a serious concern. Wages and clinic rentals have to be accounted for every month even though there have been no revenues causing a huge socio-economic impact. The fraternity needs to be very careful when it comes to practicing dentistry in this environment as even a small slip in following protocols and taking precautions can turn out to be very expensive. So, how do we reopen dental practices when the health risks are unprecedented? Now, let's see why there's a need to reopen. It's important to acknowledge that dentists are doctors too and their patients need them. Dental offices cannot remain closed forever, not only from an economic standpoint but from a general health perspective. Dentists have compelling reasons to reopen. Without patient traffic, there is no way practices can sustain their payroll and overhead expenses. While many have tried to provide limited emergency care during the lockdown period, Many dentists need to resume providing treatment for their businesses to survive. Coming to the solution part now. There are few recommendations amidst ongoing crisis. Like every patient needs to be made aware of changes to expect during their next appointment. For example, you can send them a welcome message explaining what to expect when they visit you. Iterate and then reiterate the new modifications during phone screenings. For instance, anyone entering the clinic must wear a mask. Adults 
must come alone unless they require physical assistance from another adult. Only one adult should accompany a child and bringing siblings along should be discouraged. Temperature, oxygen saturation, pulse rate should be taken upon arrival. Anyone with a cough or fever should be carefully assessed. Send follow-up emails detailing new protocol before appointments and hang signage where everyone can see it upon arrival. Clear signage is critical. To promote social distancing among the staff and patients, remove chairs from your waiting room. Advise all who are coming in for an appointment to call from the car when they arrive. The receptionist can notify patients by call or text when the dentist is ready to see them. It's also helpful to remove all magazines, toys and any furniture that might entice patients to linger. Put tape on the floor to prevent people from getting too close to reception. Inform everyone ahead of time that they may need to wait in their car or outside before being allowed inside. How can we survive the COVID-19 pandemic? As we all have a lot more time on our hands and armed with an internet connection, Please consider taking a few actions to help your practice bounce back and get ahead for when it's safe to resume good practice. These actions won't cost you a thing and they are easy enough to do on your own. First of all, get your Google My Business profiles in order. If you Google your practice name, your Google My Business profile is the panel of information and photos that typically comes up on the right side of your computer screen. The profile is free, easy to edit and packed with features that can help patients learn about your practice and services. Optimizing your Google My Business profile may sound complicated, but it's actually quite simple and user friendly. If you know that you have access to your Google My Business profile, log into it at business.google.com. Simply add as much information about your practice as possible, complete with descriptions of your credentials, care philosophy, services and plenty of attractive photos, which are often the most viewed part of your profile when a patient is searching for a dentist. Then you can ask patients for reviews. Patient reviews are one of the simplest and most powerful positive signals you can send to search engines. The quality, quantity and pace at which your practice collects new reviews all affect your practice local search visibility. Consider sending patients a note to ask for a review now. Let them know that it's one of the simplest ways they can help your practice. Also learn to use digital documents. Convert the screening and consent forms to digital documents when possible. Then email or WhatsApp necessary documents ahead of time and collect information during pre-screening calls. Ask patients to complete all intake and medical history forms prior to their visit. These fillable forms can also be attached to your website. Then examine the scope of teledentistry in your practice. Do your best to triage patients over the phone. Keep in mind that doctors can prescribe treatment over the phone to prevent an unnecessary visit. Digital technology will become more prominent and many patients may want to communicate with you online, especially if you have established good relationships with them. Teledentistry provides a method for virtual dental consults safely and easily and we may see a growth of this technology. The telemedicine market is booming and the acceleration is due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Then create awareness among your patients. You can do this through an email or WhatsApp. With this communication, outline how the practice is handling the COVID-19 pandemic and stress that your first priority is keeping your patients and team members safe. 
tell patients about the precautions you are taking to keep them safe. It will make patients feel more comfortable. If you are closing the clinic, explain why. Also let patients know when you are plan to reopen and if you will be providing teledentistry services in the meantime. Send them updates as necessary. Communication has become extremely important in an era of information overload from various sources. We need to find the right way of articulating knowledge and information to prevent fear mongering amongst patients and create awareness by being honest and transparent. When we talk about adapting structural changes in dentistry to meet present requirements, dentists and their assistants must mandatorily use quality and complete personal protective care as mandated by various organizations at all times. However, there is a huge cost implication in procuring preventive care. Dental clinics require newly structured and redesigning with huge investment in the right equipment to maintain strict hygiene and sterilization levels. If some practitioners choose to compromise on the quality of PPE used or sanitation maintained in their clinics, the resulting impact on societal health will be catastrophic. Patients will come to expect appropriate infection control procedures now. We have to be very thoughtful and careful now and our decisions about infection control must be evidence-based. Apart from the significant monetary investments required to continue safe dental practice, there is also the equally important issue of proper training of the staff and proper process management in following these protocols to ensure minimal risk to patients and dentists alike. Because we don't know, at currently we don't have any knowledge at the moment how long this COVID-19 will continue for. Coming to another important issue, that is the impact of PPE on healthcare providers. Dental professionals everywhere are concerned about their own safety and well-being and also the safety of patients and co-workers. Countless dental professionals have been expressing concern about how they are going to be able to work with the new personal protective equipment recommendations. Clinicians have spent hours and huge amount of money on equipment and supplies. Over the past few weeks, reports started coming in from those who had already started providing emergency care. Doctors were reporting profuse sweating, headaches and fatigue. Dentists may face multiple health challenges as we adopt new ways of practicing. Will some problems be temporary and others more complicated with unexpected consequences? These questions simply can't be answered right now, but our mindset has to shift. We need to learn to prepare for our health in a different way to protect our physical and emotional well-being. There is no way to forecast how the future health of dentists will fare. But without information, we simply won't know what questions to ask, much less how to adapt. Here is some of the raw data. One question generated an enormous response. Since using the new PPE in the clinical setting, I am now experiencing the following conditions. The responses will make you realize you are not the only one. This table shows a number of conditions which clinicians have been experiences with the wear of PPE. And these conditions are ranging from weight loss, dark urine, dizziness, feeling lightheaded, facial skin soreness, dry skin, increased facial acne, sense of dehydration, muscle fatigue, headaches. Mental fatigue, profuse sweating, racing heart, shortness of breath, dry mouth, decrease in oxygen saturation, difficulty in nasal breathing, decrease in blood pressure, mouth breathing, 
increase in blood pressure feeling flushed nausea intense thirst reduction in urinary output irritability constipation mood swings depression difficulty focusing exhaustion clinicians have also reported experiencing dry eyes sore throat rash runny nose pressure blister on nose bridge coughing at night tmj discomfort eye strain tight chest chapped lips air pressure occlusion changes clogged ears bloating itchy tingling skin bloody nose intermittent premature ventricular contractions facial muscle twitches and sleep apnea so what's the plan the information clearly indicates that dental professionals of all ages are experiencing increased levels of physical and emotional discomfort as they transition back into the workplace each one of us intends to do no harm when providing patient care but can you honestly say that you would want to receive care from a clinician who has a raging headache or is feeling exhausted i'm not advocating that we abandon our chosen professions at all but rather asking you to spend time honestly assessing what is going on in your body and then formulating a plan on how to prepare for the workplace differently every one of us will have to find their own personal oasis but here are some potential questions to ponder what are you willing to tweak slightly plan for hydration breaks schedule an actual lunch hour take a pp break alter your diet to include more liquids fruit and vegetables move on to a happier environment limit moisture robbing salty snacks create a personal oral moisturizing plan learn to do nasal breathing find a way to lower stress stand up for yourself be the leader in bringing up these really hard subjects remember you are not the only one who's hot and sweating and trying to figure out what next we can't do this alone we need each other the learn evidence based dentistry now is a good time to learn and adopt best dental practice by adopting evidence based dentistry for example if a patient asks you which toothpaste or mouthwash has the best outcome will you be able to find a reliable source online and look for systematic reviews on the topic are you able to discuss your decision making with the patient in a way that lets them know that you are familiar with the strength of the evidence to support a given treatment protocol do you even know where to look in the literature for evidence based disease management in the past dental professionals didn't always have access to the latest dental research they often made decisions on how to treat patients or make recommendations based on their own judgment a colleague's opinion or what they learned in college practicing dentistry this way is outdated and not reliable for patients and it is not always what research shows is best researchers on the other hand study large numbers of patients and work hard to be objective in their findings they know that dental knowledge changes constantly what we consider factual today is obsolete tomorrow and treatment protocols change based on new and improved research and clinical trials those who apply evidence based dentistry to patient care they learn how to look at all of the evidence and they know how to judge it objectively having a working knowledge of evidence based dentistry will be essential in a post pandemic dental environment patients are becoming more sophisticated and they will continue to challenge you on multiple levels we must be tech savvy and proficient at accessing journal articles and databases like pubmed and cochran oral health which specializes in meta analysis of dental research so in addition to binge watching netflix take the time to learn evidence based dentistry eventually you will begin to understand the evidence pyramid 
and how to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of a study or online resource. Patients will return post-pandemic. But they may scrutinize the dental profession more closely, especially safety issues. Putting best evidence into practice is a good start in an uncertain environment. Now coming to the part which has been troubling most of us. How can we financially survive the COVID-19 pandemic? First of all, find ways to reduce overhead. You really need to do this immediately as it's critical to your fiscal well-being. Make a list of all your financial obligations. Start with your fixed costs including rent, equipment, material consumable payments. Then list optional expenses. Look for things you can take on yourself to reduce the amount of money leaving the practice. Next, figure out your monthly expense total. This is a crucial step. Once you know that number, you can assess how much cash you have on hand and come up with a plan to cover those expenses. When you are done, you will know how long you can stay afloat without any new revenue. Then keep your team members informed. As you are going through your expenses, it's difficult to avoid the fact that payroll and rental is one of the biggest expense of all. I'm sure you are wondering how you are going to pay your employees. While it's a difficult decision, one option is to lay them off temporarily or pay them on part-time work basis. The most upcoming challenge in this era is the increase in the cost of oral health services which can limit the patient access to health care as limited resources lead to rationing and delaying and denial of care. Dentistry was already cited as one of the costliest professions in India by most of the poor and also by some rich Indian patients. Believe me, this bar is all set to go higher in near future as and when we resume the regular operations of dentistry anytime 6 to 12 months from now. We will have to learn to live with the virus and it is the new eternal but bitter truth. As dentists, we have to play our part in preparing our patients for this new reality. Let us talk of present circumstances of COVID-19 and the challenges of costing associated with it. Now we, are all, we all are very familiar with the fact that we have to consider every patient as an asymptomatic carrier. As the in charge of our setup, we will have to mandatorily provide for appropriate PPE for ourselves and our staff to protect ourselves. A reasonably comfortable PPE kit is in the range of rupees 7 to 800, which means minimum one for you and one for your assistant, and if you are fond of 600 dentistry, two for your assistant. As per reports or studies coming in, the PPE kit has to be one for each patient and disposed of after that. Now just assume a patient coming in for a consultation which you earlier charged 500 rupees. Add up the bare minimum cost of two PPEs of you and your assistant to the procedure. Would the cost of one simple consultation zoom up to around Rs. 2500? Would it be feasible and practical? If the option is between choosing between your lives and saving some money, what will you choose? We all know the answer to it, whether we want to accept it or not. All this and many more such aspects will add up the cost of doing dentistry in this era. Calculation and management of the cost and expenses relating to clinic overheads, especially when done on a monthly basis, is one of the most important tools for success in any dental practice. The most common reason that dentists don't take time out to determine the percentage of their clinic's overhead costs and expenses is simply that they are too busy to invest time in such activity. 
they say with so many tasks and duties that must be completed on a given day dentists feel they don't have time to calculate overheads on a regular basis however the ability to calculate and exert control over monthly overhead costs is vital to the continued success of any dental practice therefore it is important that each dentist develops an effective plan which enables them to track their monthly expenses if this is done it will help many of us to lower our useless expenses we have to take into account the newer investments as our running costs are going to grow many fold and the incoming cash collection won't be coming at the same pace and volume as before due to the decreased purchase power of the patients because of a strong recession in the economy every such decision of investment in the clinic be the buying of new equipment or an expensive material has now to be backed by scientific logic a basic understanding of your figures and numbers and calculation of costs so we have to raise charges in our dental clinics as each day is passing in this lockdown new standard operating protocols are coming up from many of the stalwarts of the business many things are going to change forever in dentistry whether or not all dentists wish to adopt the same or not so that means one has to treat less but charge more this will be the aspect that the input expenses are now all set to go higher so how are we going to achieve increased charging i would suggest that pareto's principle of 80 20 is all set to play a bigger role in our dental clinics also as it does in most spheres of business and life the understanding of the charging part begins from the breakdown of our income from our record keeping setup we have to first analyze where does the majority that is 80% of our clinic income coming from which services are the most predominant ones contributing to our revenue primarily in the clinic that is 80% so if i am an orthodontist most of my income must be coming from orthodontic procedures so have a breakdown first to arrive at those procedures which contribute to the 80% income category believe me those will be just a handful and those falling in the 20% income category they would surely be a lot in number now let us assume that you have arrived at a figure that your overall costs are going to increase by 25% as increased cost so how do you decide the raise do you make a raise in all services in the clinic the answer would be a no we don't have to raise all our procedures by the escalated charge but just the handful of those procedures contributing to our 80% revenue a simple formula would be to increase 25 to 30% in the 80% contribution category procedures and 10 to 15% in the procedures of 20% category so that your average cost increase still comes up to almost 25%. This should be the basic formula to start with after resumption of dental practices and as we arrive at the exact percentage increase in cost after 2 to 3 months of working the tweaking can then be done accordingly based on the actual numbers some amount of raise in consultation fees is also desirable raising every procedure by 25 to 30% sends across a wrong message to patients let us try to understand this with the help of few examples now assume the average revenue or gross collection or income in a clinic is rupees 1 lakh the clinic expenses or overheads are generally presumed in the range of 50% that is 
So your carry home net income is also in the range of 50% that is 50,000. Now assume the enhanced expenses are in the range of 25% increase that is 12,500. So your total expenses that become 50,000 plus 12,500 to 62,500. If you don't increase the charges, your carry home net income would be down to rupees 37,500. The above is in the case that the same revenue is being generated in immediate COVID-19 scenario which is highly unlikely to happen at least immediately. Now let us presume a situation where the monthly revenue or gross collection falls by 25%. So the average income, monthly income becomes 75,000. Your overall expenses along with the increased expenses are 62,500. If you don't increase the charges, the carrying home net income would come down to rupees 12,500. So we see for a 20% fall in income, carry home will reduce by 87.5%. Another situation where the monthly revenue or gross collection falls by 33% which is quite a possibility. So the average revenue per month would be 67,000, total expenses 62,500. So your carry home net income would be 4,500. We see for a 33% fall in income carry home will reduce by 95.5%. Now, if the average revenue per month falls by 50%, so the carry home net income in this case would be a negative. That means for a 50% fall in income, you are actually spending out of your pocket and this is an alarming situation. So what's the solution? You have to plan to increase via Pareto principle phenomenon. 80% of paying procedures, although handful in number, escalate by 25 to 30%, average is around 27.5% and the average raise contributes to output is 22%. And 20% of procedures, which are a bigger lot in number, Increase by 10 to 15 percent, the average is around 12 and a half percent. The average raise contributing to output will be 2.5 percent. So, adding up the two above 22 percent plus 2.5 percent, approximately 24 and a half or rounded off to 25 percent increase in revenue. Now, let us apply the solution. In the first example which we consider that is when the average revenue was rupees 1 lakh if now raising the charges by applying the above formula of 25% your enhanced revenue after raise will be 1 lakh 25,000 the overheads and increased expenses total up to 62,500 so the carry home net income would be plus by 25% that is 62,500. So we see there is a raise in carry home income. This is in case of same revenue being generated in post COVID-19 scenario which of course is not a possibility at least in immediate future. So if revenue generated is the same but with raise in charges selectively and with increased costs, the carry home amount will rise by 25%. Another example, the when the average revenue per month falls by 25%, that is it, be, it is now 75,000, you raise the charges by applying the formula. Uh, that is an increase of 25%. So the enhanced revenue after raise is 94,000 rupees. The total expenses they amount to 62,500. Uh, 62, the carry home net income is now 31,500.
So for a 25% fall in income, but with raise in charges selectively and with increased cost as well, carry home will reduce by 68.5%. Whereas when you were not increasing the charges, the fall was 87.5%. Now, when the average revenue per month falls by 33%, the amount is 67,000. You raise the charges by applying the formula. The enhanced revenue is now 84,000. So, your carry home net income would be now 21,500. So, for a 33% fall in income, but with raise in charges selectively and with increased costs as well, carry home will reduce by 78.5%. Whereas, when we were not increasing the prices, it was 95.5% fall. Now, in an example where the average revenue per month falls by 50%. So, after raising, after applying the uh, raise in charges formula, that is increased by 25%. The enhanced revenue after raise is 62,500. Your overall expenses are 62,500. Now we see for a 50% fall in income, but with raise in charges selectively and with increased cost as well, at least you are not spending from your pocket. The aim should not be that we have high charges exorbitantly to our patients, rather that we are offering latest facilities following the strictest guidelines and protocols in the form of value addition and all that comes at a price escalation in only a few procedures. The basic idea was to put across a simple calculation. I fully understand however that each clinic is unique and has different resources, so the best answers are known by the one who handles those. My basic aim is just to give a roadmap for calculation for the above. My final thoughts are, use this as an opportunity. Try not to dwell on the negatives. Instead, use this time to make improvements to your practice. Take on projects you haven't had time for. Commit to making positive changes and patients will notice when they are back in the chair. To successfully reopen and rebuild trust among patients and staff, the emphasis needs to be on providing a safe environment and quality care. I would conclude by saying that at present, closely adhering to all safety regulations put in place by the relevant authorities would go a long way towards relieving the fear and anxiety associated with going to the dentist. Together, we can win over coronavirus. Take the necessary precautions, but don't allow fear to rule over your mind. Thank you.